Hello everyone, in this video we'll take a look at how you can use inline debugging on your ESP32 using Platform.io. First up, let's take a look at the hardware we'll need. The main piece of hardware we'll need is a board by Espressive called the ESP Prog, and it breaks out JTAG pins that you connect to your ESP32. The only other piece of hardware you'll need is an ESP32 board that breaks out the pins 12, 13, 14 and 15. To connect your ESP prog to the ESP32, just use the pinouts as shown on the screen now, and you can leave the other pins on the ESP prog disconnected. Or if you're feeling lazy, you can buy one of my debug boards on Tindy, which just break out these pins to an equivalent connector, and then you just use an IDC cable to connect between the ESP prog and these boards. Next, we'll install the drivers. Platform.io have some instructions on what to do with the drivers, and I'll go through the Windows one here. First thing you need to do is install the FTDI drivers. If you scroll over to the right, there's an executable that I find makes this a little easier. Next, you want to download and install the tool Zadig. Inside the Options menu, click List All Devices. Then select the Dual RS332 Interface 0 option from the menu and click Replace Driver when WinUSB is selected. You may need to repeat these Zadig steps in the future if you change USB port. Basically, we're jumping ahead a bit here, but if you see the error message you see on screen now, you probably need to repeat the steps. Next, we'll look at setting up Platform.io. If you've this already done, there'll be a timestamp in the description for you to skip it. The first thing that you need to do is download and install VS Code. Inside VS Code, you want to click on the Extensions option and then search for Platform.io, select it and then click Install. Next, let's try out an example to test that it's working. In the PIO toolbar, click the Home icon and then click the Project Examples button. In this drop-down menu, select the Arduino Blink under the Espressive 32 option. You'll find the code that was normally contained in the sketch is contained in the Source folder. Board configurations are stored in platform.ini. This example even defines several boards, but to make it simpler, we'll just remove all but one. Platform.io automatically detects COM ports to upload your code to, but when you've multiple ones, which you will when you're using the debugger, I think it makes sense to explicitly call it out, and you can do that using the upload port definition that you put in platform.io.ini. To upload the code, just go back down to the toolbar and click the Upload button and let it do its thing. Hopefully everything will go as expected and you should be greeted by a blinking board. Next we'll move on to the actual debugging. The first thing we'll look at is something that actually caught me out while I was making this video. At the time of making this video, the most recent platform I.O. is 4.3 and there's a bug in it which relates to debugging. For now we can just update to the latest dev version. Click on the terminal button in the toolbar and type in PIO space upgrade space dash dash dev. We need to edit the ini file to enable configuration for the debugging. Debug tool specifies the programmer we're using and debug init break is a trick we learned from Andreas to get it to stop in the setup of the sketch. To show off one of the features you can use using the debugger, we're going to change the delay to be stored in a global variable called delay time. It's worth mentioning at this stage that you can't use pin 12, 13, 14 or 15 in your sketch because they're used by the JTAG pins. So say the Adafruit Feather Huzzah we saw earlier, we can't use the built-in LED on that because it's on pin 13. After uploading the sketch to the board again, we're ready to start debugging. Up in the top menu, click on Run, and then click on Start Debugging. This will take a few minutes to complete, even when the terminal shows a success. If you click on Debug Console, you'll see that it's still doing some things in the background. If everything went to plan, it should stop at your breakpoint at the start of the setup. Click to the left of the line number to create a new breakpoint, and then you can press this Play button up the top to continue to the next breakpoint. A really useful feature is variable watches. Basically, it lets you see what the value of a variable is at any given breakpoint. To add a watch, just click on the plus button and type in the name of the variable. We also have access to all the variables in this section. We'll look for delay time, which is a global, so it'll be under the global section. And as you can see, there's a huge amount of global variables defined, so it actually takes a while to find the one you're looking for. 
you can also edit these variables and in real time it will change the behavior of your application, which I think is really cool. To see this in action, we can disable the breakpoint and click continue. And as you can see, the LED is now flashing much faster than before. One issue I ran into while doing these tests was sometimes the ESP32 would refuse to flash if it was plugged into the ESP prog. I don't know what causes this because most of the time it works fine, but I found if you just disconnect the ESP prog from the ESP32, it will upload just fine and you can plug it back in afterwards. Hopefully you found this video interesting and if you have any comments please let me know in the comments below or if you want to discuss on my discord that's also a great place for makers to hang out. I also want to say a huge thanks to my github sponsors for helping support the channel. If you don't know github are matching any sponsorships I receive for the next six or seven months. And that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.